Hey, Walter Sorrels back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, making a stropping wheel to get that knife shaving sharp. So as I've mentioned in some other videos, I'm kind of interested in sharpening right now, kind of changing some of my own sharpening procedures, and this video is part of that process. Now, there are basically two parts to sharpening if you really want to get crazy with it and really make that knife shaving sharp. The first is what's known as honing, which is sharpening the blade against some kind of abrasive surface, a sharpening stone, a belt grinder, a bench grinder, whatever. And the way it works is that you're sharpening with the abrasives moving in toward the edge of the knife. There is a second part of sharpening, which is known as stropping. Now, stropping, and sometimes people might refer to it as polishing, uh, but basically the idea is that you're taking the wire edge, which is sort of formed when you... Uh, abrasively sharpen that knife and you want to get rid of that wire edge or burr and so stropping is part of that process but stropping does a lot more than that it also polishes the edge and brings the whole edge right up to a very sharp point which makes it cut better so now you can go out for 18 bucks on ebay and buy a sort of paper stropping or polishing uh, wheel that you put on a bench grinder and that will help you polish the blade really pretty quickly. Uh, why don't I just go out and spend the 18 bucks? Well, sometimes I just enjoy doing a project just to do it, and that's kind of what we're doing here today. So I took a couple or three runs at this, doing some different things, and uh, really the, the, the final one, the one that we're gonna show here today is the only one that worked properly, so uh, let's just jump right on into it. I'll be using MDF for my wheel medium density fiberboard. MDF is like the nerdy annoying accountant of the carpentry world. Nobody can really love him but oh my when you need him he is so useful. MDF is not very structurally sound material. It's basically like a huge fat piece of paper but it's very flat and predictable and easy to manipulate. I began by marking the basic shape roughly an 8 inch circle using an earlier and less successful attempt that I made on this project as a template. Then I cut out the blank on the bandsaw. Next, I'll be using a metal lathe to turn the wheel. For those of you who own wood lathes, I've seen another video that shows an alternative approach using a wood lathe. I think there are some shortcomings to this approach, but I'll leave a link to that video in the description in case you want to check it out yourself. Now we'll reverse the jaws on my lathe and chuck up the blank, making sure it's nice and flat to the jaws. I'll use the drill chuck on the tail stock of my lathe to bore the hole. First, a pilot hole for accuracy, then a 5 8 inch drill to match the size of the arbor on my bench grinder. Boy, I really thought I was keeping my arm out of the shot. Not so much, Walter. Now that we've got a clean bore, I'll reverse the jaws of my chuck again to hold small stock. I'm using a little mandrel that I made for some earlier project. It's basically just an aluminum rod turned to the same diameter as the arbor on my bench grinder, then drilled and tapped for a quarter twenty screw. Now the reason I'm doing it in this order, first drilling the hole, then putting it on a mandrel, is that you want this wheel to run as true as humanly possible. The less perfect the concentricity of the wheel, the more it'll bump and vibrate, making the stropping process pretty frustrating. If you turn the outside first, then drill the center hole, 
any minor problems with straightness or concentricity in that hole will make the wheel run out of true, which at 3750 RPM can have some pretty unpleasant consequences. Anyway, the way the mandrel works, I just leave the face of the mandrel a hair shy of the face of the wheel. Then, using some scrap micarta, a small washer, and a quarter twenty cap screw, I snug it onto the chuck. Now, if I were cutting metal, this would probably be a terrible way of doing this because the wheel isn't dogged to the chuck in any way, meaning that it'll slip pretty easily. But by taking very light cuts at a fairly high rotational speed and slow feed, I don't run into any problems with it catching or slipping. Now, is this good lathe hygiene? Nah, but it works. I was also concerned that the carbide single point tool that I'm using, which is really intended for metal, wouldn't cut the MDF very cleanly, and that I might need to fabricate a really sharp tool from high speed steel. But, nope, this worked just great too. As I said, if you have a wood lathe instead of a metal lathe, you can do it that way too. Since I have both, I chose the metal lathe. As I said earlier, the key here is turning the exterior concentric to the mounting hole. This is more easily accomplished on my metal lathe, which, unlike my wood lathe, has a tailstock fed drill chuck. But if you only have a wood lathe, especially one that you can mount a drill chuck into the tailstock, it'll work fine using a bowl chuck or even screwing it into a faceplate. You may have to add a couple of steps that I haven't done, but ultimately you should be able to get to the same place. And that's all there is to that. So let me jump in here real quickly just to make a quick point. I think part of the success of this channel has been that we have pretty high production values. We take lots of different shots. Um, we try to light everything pretty well, use high quality cameras, um, really get close ups of everything that we're showing so that you can actually see what we're doing. And uh, that takes a ton of time. It takes a ton of work. So if you appreciate the hard work that we do here on the channel, uh, a way of giving back and helping us to make more videos, better videos, is to be a patron of the channel on Patreon. So if you go to uh, the link that we'll show in the description here, you can click on that and uh, help out this channel. All right, let's jump back into it. Now I'll install the finished wheel on the bench grinder and try it out. Charge it with a little bit of polishing compound, a few passes, success. I'm actually a little surprised at how great it works. It runs extremely smoothly with absolutely no bounce or vibration whatsoever. As a result, it's very easy to keep steady contact between the face of the wheel and the edge of the knife. So take a look at that. Mirror polished and sharp as a razor in less than a minute. One last safety note. Once I completed the wheel, I went ahead and removed the safety shroud around the wheel because in the unlikely event that this thing catches a knife and throws it, I don't want it bouncing off the lip of the shroud and sticking into my heart. I'd rather it be thrown all the way to the floor. Incidentally, if you're curious about what kind of stropping compound to use, the classic compound is green chrome buffing or stropping compound. I tried out a variety of compounds on my wheel, different fillers, different types of abrasives, different grits. And you know what? They all seem to work just fine. The wheel rotates really fast, and so it achieves a mirror polish on my knives in really just a few passes, no matter which type of compound I use. Now look, you can get on eBay, and for 18 bucks, you can buy a cardboard wheel that does very much the same thing as this wheel that I made. Is it worth the effort just to save a couple bucks? In a return on investment sense, probably not. But I knew that going into this process. 
The takeaway from this process for me is that I learned some things about sharpening that I probably wouldn't have if I'd just slapped down the money for a stropping wheel kit off eBay. Want to know more about how to use the wheel? I'll do a video on that subject shortly. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. If you feel like you got something out of this video, don't forget to subscribe. Also, click on the link to Patreon for a great way to give back to the channel. Plus, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Links in the description. If you want something sharp and pointy, maybe a gift for yourself or one of the cooler people in your life, check out my Tactics Armory website and pick up one of our tactical or outdoor knives. And finally, if you want to learn to make hamons or Japanese swords, check out waltersorrelsblades.com where you can find videos about how I make hamons as well as forging, mounting, polishing, and fittings for Japanese swords. Thanks and see you soon!